Welcome back to An Engineer's Life, Episode 19, Does Being First Matter? In this clip, I will explore by personal examples whether being first ever really matters. The conclusion I will come to is that it does not, at least not in the way we might think. Wow, I forgot just how stiff these old typewriters are, even after spending hours cleaning it up and tuning it. I grew up in a small farm community. Back then, there was tremendous gender stereotyping. Boys were forbidden to sign up for home economics class, and girls could not take shop class. I was the very first boy to be allowed to take typing. The question is, did it matter? Not really. It did not get me any dates, which is probably the reason I signed up in the first place. It also did not help in high school because I can't remember typing even one report. However, it wasn't entirely a waste. Typing was helpful in college and necessary later as an engineer. Taking typing class early helped speed up the learning process a bit. I completed my Ph.D. with a thesis in winding at the newly formed Web Handling Research Center at Oklahoma State University. For this research, I bought a Macintosh 2 computer. The first reason was that it had a very heavy-duty math processor that would be useful for winding models. Still, I could have bought an IBM PC, the standard for such things. The second reason was that the Mac had a unique ability at that time to do graphics and typesetting. This caused troubles because I had to get special permission to use a word processor because the college had a very strict typewriter based standard on how the thesis was to be prepared. That usually meant you had to pay a professional typist to finish your thesis. There was probably little net utility at that time for going the word processing thesis route, but it did give me some satisfaction to see two professors buying a Mac for their own work soon thereafter. Probably the biggest benefit did not come until five years later when I started writing my web handling trilogy where I was the first Tappy Press author to ever do their own typesetting. Calculators were common enough in 1974, my second year in college. However, nearly all were simple four-function calculators. I was the first in my college to have a scientific calculator that could do logarithms, trig, and other functions. This caused great controversy. The first was whether a calculator should be allowed on a test. It was decided no the first year, but yes the next year, when most of the engineers already had them. Was the calculator an advantage? Not really. I already knew the slide rail quite well and still can use them. For simple problems, the calculator is not that much faster. Also, the calculator's accuracy beyond the second place did not really matter for tests or homework at that time. Real robots were quite rare in 1983. This Hero 1 by Heathkit had about 2,000 parts to assemble and cost about $2,000. This was a major investment of time and money for a graduate student who had a young family. Was this a good family financial investment? To be one of the very first students anywhere 
who owned a six-axis robot with range-finding sonar and a speech synthesizer? Not in the least. However, it did help me become more comfortable with analog and digital controls that was useful later as a manager of winding research at Beloit, as well as with complex computer, drive, and PLC controls throughout my engineering career. I was the very first in the paper industry to do computer animation, as well as video projection at a technical conference. It was a huge personal expense to buy a computer that could do animation and video. Then I had to go to a TV studio to have the animation video recorded, because there were no consumer recorders at that time. Then I had to beg Tappy to rent a video projector at great cost to them as an experiment. Links to these ancient presentations are given below. Nothing like this was done again for another three decades, either by myself or others. Was it worth it? Maybe. These skills were updated, and that allowed me to offer my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 school as Video On Demand. It also brings you some 300 clips on this Web 201 series on the All Web Handling channel of YouTube. After nearly a half century of being first on many occasions, I can offer opinions based on my own experiences. However, your mileage may vary, as they say. First, it takes a boatload of time and money and effort. Second, being first did not help for a while, and sometimes not at all. Third, not three people will ever know or remember you were first. Fourth, probably no one other than yourself will ever care. You can test this last conclusion quite simply. Next time you are with friends or family, tell them the story of how you took first place in a running event or got an Employee of the Month award. So, why bother with all of this trouble, you ask? Well, it certainly leads to an interesting life. It also helps foster a creative life, as we discussed in episode 17. It also improves confidence that you can tackle tough projects. Finally, if you live a life like this, it may lead to something useful. Can any of us ask for anything more of life? Thank you so very much for walking with me on this journey. Stay tuned for more in this Life of an Engineer series. Please like and share if you found something here to inspire. It is your support that helps make this all-web handling channel such a success that it is now approaching 100,000 hits. See you next time.